The, the college opened uh, in 1829 uh, and eventually moved to all this new building at the beginning of the 20th century. The official opening ceremony was 1903. The church had been opened in 1901. It was a seminary, um, a junior seminary, which basically means it was a boarding school for boys of secondary school age from all over Scotland who were thinking about the priesthood. The important thing is to realise, because a lot of people don't, is that uh, the northeast of Scotland, Aberdeen, was the centre of Catholicism when, Ab when uh, Blairs was founded in 1829. You know, it was the National Seminary. And the reason the National Seminary was here was because of John Mingus of Pitfodos donating the land this is the portrait of John Menzies, or pronounced Mingus, in this part of the world. He's the man who, in 1827, left his Blair's estate to the Catholic Church, specifically for the education of young men for the priesthood. And this portrait commemorates that fact. You can just about make out his mansion house uh, in the corner here. So that mansion house eventually became uh, the original Blair's College. By the end of the 19th century, though, that's too small. And it's then that all of this uh, was built down here on the cricket pitch. And the rector at the time was a man called Aeneas Chisholm. Uh, he eventually, in 1899, uh, becomes Bishop of Aberdeen. And he was Bishop of Aberdeen for 19 years. So this is the, the portrait of Aeneas Chisholm as the Bishop uh, of Aberdeen. The Bishop's house was in Golden Square in Aberdeen, just behind uh, the cathedral. And in that, that square at that point was not like it is today, a big car park, but was, was actually gardens of all the houses, a sort of open garden. And some of the local boys started playing football there on a regular basis. And one of the neighbours didn't like this, started a petition, went round all the houses. He refused to sign it. And the boys come and uh, ring his doorbell and thank him for not having signed it. He actually organises them into a proper football team and acts as their treasurer. Yeah, so I just thought, you know, wonderful sort of stories about it. was built in 1901. Um, it was a Monsignor Lenin from Liverpool who uh, actually gave the money uh, for the, the building, although the interior was actually paid for by other uh, benefactors. It has an unfortunate start because within four or five years they discovered dry rot uh, and they had to take out quite a lot of the interior and it's then that this magnificent interior was put in by an architect from Belgium, a man called Charles Maynard. Um, he was trained at the Glasgow School of Art and had been living and working in Scotland. So he's the man who puts in all this marble, 32 different kinds altogether. Most of it European, uh, but we do have some marble such as uh, the pillars either side of the, the altar there, the Leonardo da Vinci uh, Last Supper, uh, that's from uh, Namibia. There's some marbles from Mexico, uh, there's also some marbles from Ireland, and, uh, but most of it from Europe. actually was up in the old college chapel uh, so it's well over a hundred years old uh, and obviously the, the whole place was dedicated to St Mary uh, Our Lady the mother of uh, Jesus but everything here you know was built to the highest spec so you've actually got even this uh, altar uh, the, the statue on the top of the altar is Meyer of Munich the same company uh, that actually put in all the stained glass windows and they are still regarded today as one of the top stained glass window manufacturers in the world uh, for churches. The one on the left hand side is St. Teresa of Avila and she's there, a Spanish saint, uh, because of the fact that the rector of the old College of Blairs, who's responsible for overseeing the building of all of this and had pushed for it to happen, uh, he had a great devotion to St. Teresa of Avila and prayed for her intercession 
to make this whole project a success. And it was, so that stained glass window is there as a thank you to her. You'll also see in the stained glass windows uh, above uh, the altar, first of all, in the, in the centre, you've actually got, uh, on the left-hand panel, the Annunciation, Mary being asked by the angel Gabriel to be the mother of God. And the, at the bottom of that, there's a little inscription uh, which says, pray for the benefactor, John Gordon Smith Esquire, Minmore. And he turns out to be a former student who was here in 1830s along with his older brother, but he's the, the son uh, of the man who founded the Glenlivet Distillery. And he remains a benefactor to the college throughout his life. The other saints, as you'll see, are St Andrew, uh, St Bridget of Ireland, and then on the right-hand side, St Clumba, St Margaret and Ninian, uh, all of Scotland. And I quite like the, the idea, and I think by sheer chance, that here we are in a, a very male-dominated institution, and yet you've got a gender balance. Three brothers who were here from Trinidad in the 1840s, which must have been quite unusual back in those days. It's thought, but we don't know for certain, that they might have been the illegitimate sons of a Scottish slave owner. But they were here eh, for their education, and one of them goes on to, and gets called to the bar in England as a lawyer. But he eventually makes his way back to Trinidad, and he's the man responsible for all the legislation for the amalgamation of Trinidad and Tobago into a single country. And there's a wonderful story about him because in the court room in Trinidad, in Port of Spain, Trinidad, he would quite often translate back and forward between Spanish and English when it was required. And one of the judges actually asks him during one of the trials, where did you learn to speak Spanish so well? And his answer is just classic, but it's recorded. I mean, it happened. His answer was on the banks of the River Dee in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> 